Through growth, mergers, and acquisitions, our customers constantly face challenges that they need to overcome. Things like growing the network or integrating other branch offices are usually a big challenge for them. In this video, we will see how Cisco Data Center Architecture helps our customers address those, those challenges. In this case, our example startup company called SVT Inc. bought another company called AMS Associated, and we need to make sure that we integrate it as seamlessly and quickly as possible. As you may have seen in the high availability video, SVT Inc. currently runs our business on a multi data center topology with ACI in a multi pod fashion and UCS based converged systems, as well as Hyperflex running multiple hypervisors and container based workloads, which are currently being managed and provisioned from the cloud by Intersight. Our first mission, as a result of AM's associated acquisition, will be to integrate AM's branch office into our existing network. In the traditional world, this would involve having a local IT person at the branch who can configure and deploy a new set of switches and also hire L2 extension services like Ethernet over MPLS or Dark Fiber to extend the VLANs to the remote location. This is not only complex, but it's also expensive. Instead, instead of going old fashioned, we will leverage ACI and we will deploy a remote leaf. What this means is that we can just send a brand new unconfigured Nexus 9000 switch or pair of switches to the branch office. And by having plain routed connectivity over my internet or one link, I can add this new switch in minutes. All I need to do is to tell somebody with no technical expertise to get the new switch or pair of switches to the remote location, power them on and connect them to the existing on-site network. In my case, there is a router at the remote location. So I tell John, who is the on-site person helping me, to connect my unconfigured Nexus 9000 switch on port 152 to the router. Once he powers the new Nexus 9000 remote leaf on, it will request an IP address through DHCP. This request will make it through the one all the way back to the main ACI site. Once the AP gets the request and discovers the switch, the network admin should accept it as part of the ACI fabric, and in return, APIC will send an IP address so that we can now manage it centrally. Once we can manage it, we now have the ability to configure it as well. And in our case, we will configure an IP address on that 152 interface, as well as OSPF, so that we can have a routing protocol configured on that local link that will serve us as the underlay so that ACI can automatically build a BXLAN L2 extension to the remote location. Let's see how quick this is done in our setup. Let's first take a look at the current ACI topology to confirm it looks just as we saw in the previous slide. We can see that we have two pods already set up, one with two spines, two leaves, and two Apex for data center one, and a second data center or pod with two spines, two leaves, one remote leaf already configured, and one Apex. If we zoom into pod 2, our goal by the end of this scenario will be to see two remote leaves connected to pod 2 through the 1. This will be quite simple. First, we will go to the quick configuration wizard, where we can see we have an option to integrate a remote leaf. We will click on it, and the first step will be to specify which pod I want this remote leaf to belong to, since we may need to connect back to one of the main pods for spine functionality. This remote leaf will belong to pod 2. Therefore, I have a tab pool of addresses APIC will use to provide a management IP address to the new remote leaf. In this case, it's going to be 192.170.00/16. Then as I click next, I see I already have discovered a new switch that wants to join the fabric. I will accept it in my ACI fabric by specifying a name and an ID to it. In this case, it will be remote leaf 121. Last, I will want to configure OSPF on interface 152 for the new remote leaf. Therefore, I will tell ACI to configure an L3 out to run OSPF on area 0. I will associate a loopback and router ID address, and finally, I will specify which interface I want ACI to perform the OSPF configuration on, as well as the IP address. Once we click Finish, we will see as part of my ACA fabric inventory that I have a new switch called Remote Leaf 121. However, it does not have an IP address assigned yet. After a few seconds, it should display the IP address APIC has assigned to it based on the tab pool of addresses I previously selected. Once it is assigned, it will discover the switch 
and once it shows us active, we should be ready to configure it and monitor it centrally. We can see that now two remote leaves appear on a graphical display on ACI, and we are ready. The remote network got integrated in less than two minutes, and I did not even have to go to the branch office myself. We could achieve the same thing at the remote branch with a hyperconverged approach using Hyperflex Edge. By having a set of three Hyperflex nodes directly connected to the network without UCS Fabric interconnects and using Intersight, we can not only monitor every UCS and Hyperflex system centrally, as we mentioned in the previous video, but we could also automate the deployment of our hyperconverged environment. So, we could go back into Intersight, our software as a service solution, where we are currently monitoring all our UCS Blade, Rack, Storage, and Hyperflex servers. Remember, SCVT Inc. has multiple data centers running, so it is important for them to have a single graphical tool that consolidates management and provisioning directly from the cloud. Now, from Intersight, we can fully automate Hyperflex Edge installation for AMs associated, which is in Atlanta, by just providing very basic information like our default hypervisor desired credentials, DNS, who we want to call in case we run into any issues, in our case, our friend Jonathan Gorlin from Cisco may be useful, and then selecting the nodes I want Hyperflex Edge to be installed on. We finally add a Hyperflex cluster IP address for management and let Intersight take care of the rest. After some minutes, we have a fully functional hyperconverged cluster running in my AM's associated branch in Atlanta, which was fully configured from the cloud by Intersight, which by the way, is the same compute management and provisioning platform I am currently using for the rest of my data centers. After provisioning a hyperconverged branch in just minutes, I want to make sure that ACI remote leaf configuration actually works and that it is extending layer 2 connectivity on top of BXLAN which was automatically provisioned by ACI. We currently have the 1110-24 network configured on the web servers that are running on both ACI pods. I will have a remote server with IP 11178 hanging from interface 13 on the recently added remote leaf 121, and we'll test that there is indeed seamless connectivity on the same network between sites. Let's start by accessing our remote server, where we can confirm 11178 does not have any connectivity to the main site. 1111 is the Anycast gateway configured on the ACI fabric in this case. If we go to the APIC now, we can see the current application network profile or network configuration that is supplied consistently across pods, hypervisors, and container-based environments as we covered in the high availability video before. Currently, all the servers in the EPG named web servers are using the 1110-24 network to communicate. The only thing I need to do to use the already provisioned BXLAN tunnel and extend the 1110 network to the remote server is to select the EPG web servers and specify that I want port 13 on the recently added remote leaf 121 to behave as an access port belonging to that EPG, using whatever VLAN in this case, 2810. After a few seconds, we should see that the 11178 endpoint can now successfully reach its gateway and it has connectivity all the way back to the main data centers, just as if it were directly connected to them. No complex configurations or expensive dark fiber connections are needed. Finally, after integrating the new branch office, it is possible that the existing IP addressing schema at AMs associated may conflict with the one at my main sites. In our case, we got the 1112 IP address assigned to two endpoints at both the remote location as well as in the main data center. Imagine how long it would take you to detect this issue, which may lead to potential problems. Other issues may also rise down the road, like potentially misconfiguring the network, which may impact my application's availability. Cisco Network Assurance Engine is a software solution that constantly monitors and audits your SDN environment, looking for potential issues, configuration best practices, and more. Let's now take a look into our Network Assurance Engine, or NAE, which is currently monitoring my ACI fabric. At the main dashboard, we can see that through time, we're constantly being told through smart events about potential issues and warnings that may affect my environment. If we click on the major warning icon, we can see that NAE already detected a duplicate IP address and it is telling me which are the MAC addresses and endpoints involved and how to correct this issue. 
Not only that, but it also tells me other things I can do to optimize my configurations while maintaining the correctness of my network. How many times have you started a configuration and left it there without any purpose? Then somebody else comes in and is afraid of deleting that configuration that is doing nothing just because he's scared that it will break something. In our case, somebody configured an access entity profile called default that is doing exactly nothing. NAE tells me this, and now I can safely remove it as I know the impact of changes before making them. Another one that usually happens to us network admins is that we may configure something that does not make sense, like specifying an ACL or contract with a permit any any at the beginning of it, and then a thousand lines with explicit denies. The switch will never complain about this, but the configuration is not correct and it's not making any sense. Plus, it is affecting the performance of your switches at the ASIC level. NAE tells you how you can optimize those configurations in terms of best practices, resources, and lessons learned, plus how the switches ASICs are being consumed. In our case, everything looks good for now, but this will be constantly monitored and checked. NAE also provides you with a central tool to quickly identify, for example, how your contracts are configured and who can talk to whom. This is also useful for the security teams that are integrating SDN and ACI into their networks and want a simple way to verify and maintain compliance. We just saw how ACI can be leveraged to aggregate and simplify your network configuration, even at remote locations, extending layer 2 connectivity only using your existing WAN connection. This simplifies and reduces provisioning time dramatically through automatic discovery and configuration. We also saw that through Hyperflex Edge, we can provide the same Hyperflex agility through automated provisioning at the branch office using Intersight, while maintaining visibility and centralized monitoring. We can just connect our Hyperflex Edge nodes to our existing network, even running at one gig, and the rest is automatically provisioned for us from the cloud, leveraging the same tools we use for other Hyperflex and UCS installations, like Intersight, Hyperflex Connect, and Hyperflex Plugin for Beamware. Last, we saw how NAE can proactively analyze all policies and configurations in your data center network by just installing a software-only solution that runs on VMs with zero agents to install in less than 30 minutes. This reduces the risk in SDN configurations inserted by human errors, and it provides a way faster time to resolution for potential problems or configuration optimizations. This was just a glimpse of the power of the Cisco data center architecture. However, there's way more for you and your business to take advantage from. If you want to learn more about other potential scenarios that can help you differentiate competitively through IoT, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.